your CEO spelled out what Tex Tanner is getting out the deal. I want to ask you, what's Stone Peak getting out of this deal? So we mentioned the huge premium you're paying for this container leasing company. Just for clarification for the audience, containers are how most consumer goods are imported here into the U.S. We just saw UPS site, a lot of macro weakness. We keep hearing about the weaker consumer. Why was this deal worth it for you? Yeah, so at Stone Peak, we invest in uh, infrastructure and real assets. So we look for businesses with um, quality businesses, uh, high asset backing, uh, good barriers to entry, long-term contracted cash flows, but basically, I'd say durable and resilient cash flows with good pricing power. And so those businesses tend to be companies which power the global economy. Now, if you look at Textana, Textana is a world's largest, well, it's one of the world's largest shipping lessors. We lease um, containers to about 200 companies globally. All the major uh, shipping liners are our customers. So it's an absolutely critical link in the global supply chain. So that fits exactly okay. the mandate we look for. We think we've got very durable cash flows in the business and great long-term okay. growth prospects. So, Luke, you mentioned pricing power. That's really interesting. According to the recent data from Fredo's, container prices are down about 90% from their all-time high back in 2021. They've actually kind of settled back to their five-year average. Where do you see the opportunity? Where's the rebound? How high do you think these container prices can go back up? Yeah, I'd, I'd say, look, long-term, if you think about businesses we invest in, and if they're hard asset businesses, if inflation's increasing the capex, ultimately the uh, the least cost price off where your new container boxes are. So that's where I think the long-term pricing power is in the business. All right, so you mentioned that you have a lot of global customers. Have you been in contact with these customers? I mean, you talk about container shipping. We're talking huge companies, Walmart, Nike, et cetera. Have you get a, a sense of confidence from them that they're going to start shipping more things and bringing more things uh, to be imported into the U.S.? And also, I want to ask you, how does nearshoring in the U.S. play a part of this? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're a long-term investor. And so if you think about today, global trade, uh, containerized trade is about 175 million uh, TEU. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about deglobalization. And, and uh, look, I think it's probably slowing globalization uh, more than anything. If you look over the next 10 years, uh, I think the onshoring trend uh, and, and, you know, the decoupling with China, that probably impacts about 2 million of those uh, 175 million TUs. But over the next 10 years, you've got continued growth in consumption. You've got an emerging class globally, uh, which are in the developed economies are consuming more. And so we look at long-term growth here over 10 years at about, similar to global um, GDP growth, about 2.3%. Um, that 2 million you lose from the decoupling with China and onshoring, you're going to pick up more manufacturing capacity uh, in Southeast Asian uh, countries. Okay. We think over 10 years that picks up, and we think you've probably got, um, uh, again, uh, big growth in terms of inter-Asian trade as well.